how's it going? As always, I hope you guys are doing fantastic. So if you've been following me for a minute now, you may have seen my last crochet video that was up, which was titled From Drab to Fab, and it was showing you how to get curly crochet braids from um, Connecticut hair. And if you look at my channel now, you'll see that that video is gone. I did delete it. Now there's a few reasons for that, but the main reason being that I had omitted how I actually install my crochet braids. So being that it was a 22 minute long video, I guess some of you figured that I would have my installation part in there as well. So being that I did it and I talked about everything else but that, you know, some of you kept asking me to show that part and why didn't I show it and was upset. And I said, you know what, you're right, I get it. You know, I never want anyone to leave my videos feeling like they didn't get any help or they didn't get what they came for. So I said, you know what, let me just take it down, re-edit it, and put it up the way I intended on doing so in the first place. And that is showing you my process from start to finish. And I also did try to get this video done. I tried my best, so it may or may not be. Um, but, you know, I know I tend to talk a lot. And I gotta remember to kind of just get to the point instead of trying to over-explain myself. But I will say that with me, I tend to try to be very informative. Um, I like to be very thorough in whatever information I'm giving you. I will definitely try to stop over-explaining and explaining it five times like I'm doing now. Okay, I'm gonna stop. So first off, let's start off with the hair. And the hair that I use is this hair right here. And, oops, sorry looks like this and it is by Harlem 125 and it is their jumbo braid silky hair 100% um, connectalon hair yes connectalon hair I did not use Marley hair for this install although I've used Marley hair in the past and you can use Marley hair you don't have to use this you can use any hair that you have but I decided to try this but I like this particular brand and it's only $1.99 at my local beauty supply store so I'm able to rack up on it you know so I could buy 20 packs of these and only spend I'm sorry not 20 I bought 10 packs and only spent $20 so I think that's pretty well so I got the color 4 and I used 7 packs now I know that seems like a lot but you know it's not like the Marley hair to me Marley hair is much thicker when it comes in a pack you have much more hair than you do this hair because it's so straight and long and silky I feel like you have less hair in the pack so I tend to use more packs you know you don't have to go as big as this you can use as many packs as you like whatever you're comfortable with you know I like big hair I just is how I roll you know I be trying to get my Diana Ross on here <laughs> So this is what my base usually looks like. This is my braid pattern here. But basically it's just 12 cornrows going straight back. And as you'll see, um, hair was added into my braids. And the reason we add hair is because I like to take these pieces and kind of fold it back and kind of make a zigzag part to lay it down. So what I do is I have two I have two sides here. So basically the two sides that you have, one side you're gonna braid, the other side you're gonna braid. All right, so both sides are braided down. All right, so this is about to be full of struggle here, but I'm hope hopefully I am in the shot and you can see what I'm doing. But all I'm doing is taking that braid and kind of folding it across like this. And all I'm really gonna do is sew it down. I'm gonna take my needle. Ooh. Ooh. I'm gonna take my needle and thread. And all I'm gonna really do is just sew it down. Other braid all I'm really gonna do is just make this one braid I'm not gonna nece I'm not gonna necessarily zigzag it like I did the other one I'm just gonna take it and sew it down going upward and then I'm going to shift it shift it like this hopefully that makes sense all right 
so all of the hair is um, sewn down hopefully you saw that now I forgot to mention this when it comes to my braid pattern so as you can see these braids right here are pretty close together and then as it gets lower down they're far apart but me I like to usually wear my hair um, down the middle like this so being that it's gonna be down the middle I want it to look as realistic as it possibly can so I like to make sure that my first two braids are very close together I want a small part a very small part um please excuse my nails they are busted I have to get them done over <laughs> sorry about that but um yeah I like to make sure that these two are very close together because I want my part to be small because trust me I've done it where I did my two braids here and the space was so big in between it looked like I was part in the Red Sea okay it was just way too far apart so to make it look realistic you want to make sure your braids are as close together so I kind of do that with the majority of the braids up here because I tend to flip my hair a lot sometimes back and forth so if I do that I still want the part to look as realistic as it can possibly be and then for the rest of the braids I don't really mind how spaced out they are because nobody's gonna really see those so that's fine but that's what I usually do for my braid all right so uh, please excuse my struggle here right now it is full of struggle yes it is um, this clip is actually being recorded a uh, week after I took out my crochet braids and I'm actually on to doing something else but um, the clip that I had recorded of course got deleted somehow which destroyed my life so yeah I said you know let me try to do this over again now I cannot braid for my life so yeah home alone so uh, yeah there's no one to braid my hair so I tried to do it myself and it looks pure struggle but anyway, hopefully this still comes out clearly. Um, so I'm going to show you two ways of how I install my hair. On this side, I'm going to show you how I do majority of my hair, which is just a regular knot. And this side is going to be knotless, which I'll explain in a minute. This is the needle that we use, uh, crochet needle, crochet, whatever you want to call it. Um, you can usually find this at your beauty supply store, your local beauty supply store. I got mine for a dollar, so yeah, they're pretty cheap. As far as just doing it the regular way, which is how the rest of my hair usually is crocheted, all I do is take my crochet needle here, slide underneath my braid like so, take my strand of hair. Now you can do small or bigger sections, especially with the pieces that are not going to really be seen. You can go as big as you want, however you choose to, but just hook it on like such. Hook it on. Make sure your latch is open. Close it. Slide it underneath. And then take your whole strand like such. This is your whole strand. Take the whole strand and slide it underneath like this. Then I twist it like this to secure it some more twice. You can do it three times, but for this purpose, I'm just going to do it twice. And then just pull it close, and voila. I'm going to do that one more time. So, so you want to make sure your latch is open when you slide underneath, and you're going to slide it underneath your braid like so. so you have your needle. It's open. You just want to take your hair, slide it on, hook it on, close it, and then slide it underneath your braid. You're just going to take the whole strand and just slide it underneath like so. Twist it, slide it underneath, twist it, and just slide it through and pull. And voila. So basically when it comes to knotless braids, those are usually the ones that I do at the very top wherever my hair is going to be seen. So I tend to wear my hair parted down the middle, definitely not like this. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I, tend to, I tend to wear it down like that so uh, 
these two braids, the first two braids are going to be the braids that are going to be seen. So I don't want it to look like crochet braids. I want it to look as realistic and natural as it possibly can. So we're going to do knotless braids. And knotless ones is basically you just trying to conceal the knot. Alright, so take your needle, slide it underneath your braid. Take your strand of hair. Now when it comes to the knotless ones, I like to take this, a very small section of hair because the bigger the piece, the bulkier it is. And you want to kind of make sure that this is as flat as it possibly can be. So you take a really small strand and you hook it on close slide it underneath your braid like so now this is where the difference lays instead of taking your whole strand and just sliding it through what you're going to do is actually separate this piece into two pieces separate it into two pieces hold one piece in one hand the other piece is going to get slid you're going to slide it through the loop like such and then you're just going to pull now if it was Marley here I would keep it like this and just bring this piece over like this and that's what's going to conceal your knot but because it's Kanekalon hair this hair is a little bit too straight and it can slide right through so I pull and then I take this part here so this other part this the part that's going to conceal the knot I'm going to leave for a minute I'm just going to take this piece and separate that into two and then just create a loop on this side And then take up the piece and slide it through and then just kind of pull like such and then bring that piece over to conceal my knot like such all right so I'm gonna do that again just slide your hair underneath I mean you need on the your small section of hair, hook it on, close, slide underneath your braid, separate into two, bring one piece under the loop and kind of just pull. Now it may stay and you can kind of just pull it over like so. But I like to make sure that it's secure and that it won't kind of just slide all over the place. Then I take this piece on this side, separate that into two, create a loop. slide the hair through and then just go to close it that one's kind of sloppy but then bring that over to conceal my knot like so now I'm going to do a few more so you can kind of see and I'm going to show you the difference between this side and this side all right, so if you look at the two sides, the difference, um, this side is the knotless braid, which is much more concealed than this side. This is how the ma majority of my hair usually looks that can't be seen because it's covered by the rest of the hair. But um, yeah, you can clearly see the knots here like so. Um, and on this side, it looks more like it could be my hair. Like you can't really see the knots. Um, I'm not the greatest with knotless, but I mean it works for me but yeah you wanna that helps um, make it look like it could possibly be your hair although you know if you look closely you know it ain't but um yeah so that's how I usually install my crochet braids so for this particular tutorial I'm going to use these orange perm rods here I got these at my local beauty supply store and I believe they were only a dollar so I got a lot of these because um, I'm going to use a lot of them 
but yeah these are what they look like and they're the size 516 the pink ones now these come in many different sizes it all depends on what you want your curls to look like the bigger the perm rod to me the more wavy your curl will come out the smaller the perm rod you're gonna have tighter curls so for me for this tutorial I want tighter curls so I'm gonna use my really small perm rod but yeah I usually use um, these these little pink ones and I'll show you what uh, it usually looks like when I do use these pink ones I'll answer the picture now so what I do is I'll take a piece of hair and usually I'll have my clips around and I'll clip the rest back to move the rest of the hair out of my face but this is a decent piece for me here like this so once I have my section I take my uh, paddle brush that looks like this I take my brush and I just brush out the hair to get it as straight as possible you want to make sure that there's really no tangles in the hair so then sometimes it depends you do not have to do this step but I like doing it it works well for me but sometimes I'll take some of my gel and it's the eco styler gel and it looks like this but I'll take that and just a little tiny bit of my finger just a little bit and kind of just smooth it out on the hair because this hair can get really frizzy and um, sometimes when I put on the perm rods it's still frizzy when I unravel it but sometimes when I put the gel on there it's not as frizzy as other times alright so I'm gonna get a little bit closer hopefully you can see it better this way but yeah you take your section of hair and I'm working with smaller pieces you don't have to work with um, a piece this small you know it takes longer this way but um yeah this piece is fine for me but you you know you use your own discretion how much hair you want to take how much hair can fit on the rod so and then take your rod put it underneath the hair like such take the hair and just wrap it around the rod wrap it kind of twisting your hand along with the rod just wrapping it around keeping it as tight as possible on the rod Still making sure that the hair is smooth when you're putting it on the rod. Make sure you have no tangles. And once you get to the bottom, if the rest of the hair doesn't fit, I just go back up the rod to make sure that all the hair fits. So I no longer have any hair left. So I have that, I take this open piece here and just close it underneath. Voila. All right, so as you can see, all my hair is now curled all around um, because they are smaller rods and I use small sections of hair. It took me about two and a half hours to curl it. Mm -mm. Can't do that again. That was just too much. Um, but yeah, so now what I do is I'm going to boil some water on the stove. And once the water comes to a boil, what I usually do is take a cup. Um, uh, not a cup like this. This is a plastic cup, but I usually take like a coffee mug, something sturdy with a handle. Um, not this because the water tends to, it's too hot for this kind of cup and it will burn the cup. So a nice sturdy coffee mug anything like that I take that and what I do is I pour the water in there and then what I do is I'll take a couple of other rods and I'll dip my head in once it's dipped in a cup I'll leave it for about 30 to 45 seconds um, sometimes a minute but really like 45 seconds it's a long process but I mean I not to say I don't mind doing it because it's just long, but I mean, I don't mind doing it because I mean, I just like the results. I, I know you can pre dip, you can pre dip the hair before installing the hair. So, pre dipping, if you don't know what that is, very briefly, is you have your hair 
and you take your perm rod before you install your hair you wrap it around your perm rod and close it and once you have however much you want you dip it in the hot water you let it dry off and then you install the hair and you have to be very careful when it comes to the boiling part very careful take your time be patient so I'm not gonna really show you the process on camera um, I tried it before it was too much yeah, I want to be very careful make sure I'm very focused when dealing with hot water you know I love you guys but I ain't trying to burn myself I'm trying to show you on camera that's just not happening so hopefully my explanation makes sense um, but yeah you want to make sure you get all your pieces once that's all done I usually keep a shower cap on and I'll throw a scarf on over it or just a shower cap and a bonnet or something to make sure the shower cap stays on just so you know when I go to bed it's on my head oh that kind of wrong <laughs> when I go to bed it's on my head I'm sorry I'm delirious if you if you have an easier way to do it by all means do that um, but this is the way that works for me this is the best way it works for me this is how I do it so um, to each their own it is now the next day my hair should be completely dry let's hope so um i am actually on my way about to head out to a barbecue finally i feel like i ain't been in no barbecue this summer like what's really going on as you can see i already did one but basically what you do is you take your roller you unhook it from where it was hooked at unhook it and all i do is take it and kind of just roll the hair down to start unraveling the hair and then I feel for the end piece of the hair on the rod sometimes it's easier it's easy to find sometimes it's not but I feel for the end once I find it I kind of just unroll the hair take your time unroll it off you don't want to pull too much and have it snag on this but once you do that voila you have your curl i'll be back with the final results yeah yeah So this is what the hair looks like right after I take it out of all the rollers. Whew, that was a lie. It's a lot. But um, yeah, this is what the hair looks like. These curls are a little too tight. And what I like to do um, to make it look a little better is kind of just take my fingers and kind of just run my hands through them very lightly like such. All right, so I fluffed it out. You know, throughout the day, I may fluff it out a little bit more. Um, but yeah, this is pretty much the end results that you get now as far as my thoughts on the hair I think it's pretty good hair I mean for the price tag it did what it needed to do um, like I said I used seven packs and it was $14 I paid $14 for a hair that was looking good for a week before I had to recurl it and then by the end of the week they're definitely a lot frizzy and I try not to put too much stuff products in the hair and maybe I just haven't found that right product yet that really works but like I said I mean for synthetic hair I think it's a pretty good brand the hair is soft especially when it comes out the packet um it does tangle the longer you keep it in and you know the less you start to care about your curls because there'll be some nights when I will forget to put my bonnet on and usually at night when I have the curls in all I really do is just sweep it up into a little bun put my bonnet on and go to sleep after a while the curls start to stick together they do start to get matted and get tangled especially starts in the back so you kind of have to remember to separate your curls I mean with any crochet braids you get you want to make sure you separate the curls if it's a curly hair um, you know because when it's popping it's popping you know when you first initially do that hairstyle it's popping you get so many compliments but of course as the days go by it starts to look like ish but hey you know for that event that I'm going to my hair was looking popping okay the only thing that would suck is that you know I spend a few hours on installing it so I can spend anywhere from three to five hours or more installing the hair and then having to curl it that takes more hours you know it's a long process that's the only thing that I don't like about this that if you want your curls to be fresh and looking popping 
like it did when you did it that first day you cannot have to recurl the hair every couple of days it's, to me you're not you know and there's some girls who can prolong their curls for a long time but in my opinion for it to still be looking fresh and without all the frizz and the tingling I feel like every couple of days I have to recurl it and that's just too much for me which is why I take it out after a while um, you know with synthetic hair I never intend on getting such a long time frame now for me I usually only keep my crochet braids in for a month max and then I take them out and I start the whole process all over again so that's pretty much my thoughts on the hair like I said if you're a person like me who don't necessarily want to spend hundreds of dollars on weaves and you want something quick but you want to you know something quick and cheap this can be it this is definitely can be the look for you um, you just have to have time and patience to do it all right so that is the end of this video I hope it was as helpful as it could possibly be um, let me know if you guys have any questions comments by all means leave them down below um, I will get back to you as soon as possible if you decide to do it and you're on Instagram tag me in it or whatever if not even if you're on Instagram just follow me at curves on the move I'm on there and um yeah you can always ask me your questions on there I answer much faster on there than I do here but any which way you can find me anyway I'm, I'm, I'm around baby I'm around so until my next video I'll see you beautiful people later bye guys <laughs>